Here we are heading into 2021 and I've picked my 12 favorite laptops for video editing. These laptops I have personal experience with. I've reviewed them. I believe they are well suited for different levels of video editing. So we're going to start at a budget price point and work our all the way up to a premium price point. And we're going to talk about what makes a budget laptop a budget laptop and what makes a premium laptop premium. The abilities and performance, the color accuracy, the build quality, all that's going to take place right here with these laptops. Let's get rocking. First and foremost, what can you fully expect out of this video? We're gonna have laptops in ascending order, as I mentioned. And make sure you stay till the end because we're gonna have benchmark test results. We're gonna have discussions regarding the specs. And if you are ready to make a purchase and you want to head down in the description below and click one of those links, those are affiliate links. And I do appreciate it when you all use those links because that keeps what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. And I'm always so grateful when you guys use those links. So keep that in mind. Now. One thing that you have to remember is these are my top picks. So if you have a laptop and you're thinking, Ben, is this laptop that I'm wanting to pick that you don't have on your list, is it a good laptop? Well, what I want you to do is I want you to stay through this whole video because I'm going to tell you why I picked these specific laptops. We're going to talk about the specs. And then what I want you to do is take the laptop that you're considering and then pair it against some of the laptops that I've recommended. And chances are your laptop's going to have some similar or exactly the same components within it. It just might be from a different vendor, different brand, maybe a different price point. And you can then compare and say, okay, yeah, Ben recommended that one. It has these specs mine, and mine has those same specs. It's a different brand, but this one will work really well. So that's what I want you to do here. I'm, I'm happy to answer your question. Maybe it has slightly different specs than any of the ones I recommended. Definitely happy for you to comment below and answer that question. But I really want you to go through the whole video. It's going to bring you a ton of value and you're going to really going to learn why these laptops are the picks that I've made heading into 2021. All right, let's dive in without any other stalls or breaks. First laptop is the Acer Swift 3. This is a laptop that I carry with me almost every single day. Um, as I'm out around town, I'm taking notes. I am writing scripts. I'm creating slides. I am editing some 1080p footage on the go. This is my go-to laptop, the Acer Swift 3. This laptop is around $650. It comes with the Ryzen 7 4700U. It has the AMD Ryzen 7 graphics, 8 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and a 14 inch full HD display. Now the one kill joy of this laptop, as you've heard um, mentioned in other videos of mine and the full review that I've done on this laptop, is that the color gamut range is not the best. And in fact, it's quite terrible. It has 64% sRGB and 47% Adobe RGB. So I don't consider this laptop like my main go-to for video editing. It is my on-the-go video editing laptop. If I want to test the color accuracy, I come home, I plug it into my uh, Acer Concept DCM2 monitor that's 100% color accurate, and I proof and make sure, okay, yeah, my color gamut and my color accuracy and all my color grading that all looks good here on this monitor, okay, I'm good to go. But I would not trust this laptop to do color grading for me because it does not have a solid color gamut range, but it is a fantastic 1080p laptop that I would highly recommend over and over again. All aluminum, lightweight, about 11 plus hour battery life, all for around $650. You really can't beat it. Next up is the HP Pavilion gaming laptop. This laptop at the price point of around $749 really is a great buy. So this is going to be better performing for your budget 4K video editing laptop. You're going to have six cores and 12 threads with the Ryzen 5 4600H. You're going to have a GTX 1650 dedicated GPU. So that means you're going to have better playback in the timeline. Something like, um, the uh, Swift 3, um, you're not going to be able to play back 4K footage. In fact, you'll have about 15,000 drop frames out of 16,000 drop frames at full quality um, if you're trying to edit 4K footage on the Swift 3, which is why I recommend it for 1080p, not 4K. On the other hand, the HP Pavilion has that dedicated GPU. It has a faster Ryzen uh, high performance processor. You got eight gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD. If you want to get even more performance out of this computer, I'd recommend upgrading this eight gigs of RAM to 16 gigs. It'll give you better multitasking, give you a little bit more space for your video editing programs. That pavilion's a really, it's honestly a really great buy. And at that price of roughly, what do we got? Roughly $750, depending on when you're looking at this, it's not a bad buy. Next up is the MSI GF65. I recommended this computer since I actually started my channel. Obviously, they've made upgrades and renditions and put new components in it, but I've always found this computer to be a great buy. About $935-ish, you can get it in either the i7-10750H or the previous edition, which is the i7-9750H. comes with the GTX 1660 Ti, which is a step up from the HP Pavilion's dedicated GPU. Going to 
give you better playback in the timeline, faster export times, a smoother playback process. Uh, just a really solid budget 4K computer. Again, the only issue that I have with this computer is the lower color gamut range. And as I said, I was gonna explain what makes a budget laptop a budget laptop versus a more premium laptop. And a lot of times what you're gonna see is you're gonna see lower color gamut range. Um, you're gonna see uh, lower quality materials used. So you're not gonna see a lot of aluminum builds at this lower end price point. Um, you're gonna see their light tops are gonna be a little heavier. They're gonna have less battery life. And so you kind of miss out on those like frills, so to speak. Now, to me, I don't consider, consider color gamut a frill, especially if I have clients. That's pretty much a necessity for me personally. Um, but uh, you can get a color accurate monitor and it'll actually improve your workflow because you have more screen space. And so you can get a budget laptop that's great for 4K and then get a color accurate monitor. You can be in business. Um, so those are some considerations to make. Um, next, we have the Acer Spin 5. Now, this laptop has great color accuracy, um, but it would not be a laptop I'd recommend for 4K. I'd recommend this as a color accurate 1080p video editing workstation that is thin, it's light, it's got a nice tall three by two screen. So rather than having a really narrow screen, um, it's gonna have a taller screen. So rather than having a screen that's like this, where you know when you're scrolling down a website, you're like, oh, I gotta scroll because I can't see it. It's got a nice tall screen which also gives you more room for video editing. Um, and then this laptop is all aluminum. This laptop has um, really good color accuracy at 100% sRGB, 79% Adobe RGB, has a higher quality screen, has a 2K Corning glass, Gorilla glass screen, so it's more durable. 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD inside of an i7, with an i7 10 excuse me, an i7-1065G7, which is an uh, upgraded Intel Iris Plus graphics. So it's gonna be even better performing than say something like the Acer Swift 3. I've seen people do some 4K video editing with this, and I just hate to make a recommendation that does not make you just celebrate the laptop. Could you do 4K video editing? Yes, you could. Would I say that it's the best thing that you could do with it? No, it is not. That's why I lean you towards 1080p. I'm trying to be uh, super honest and transparent so you're not disappointed and you're actually super stoked about the laptop choice you make. All right, next up is the HP Omen. This is the HP Omen with the Ryzen 7 processor. <clears throat> Excuse me, so this laptop is around $1,200. It has the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H. You got the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. This one comes with eight cores and 16 threads. This is a multi-core beast. It scores some of the highest Geekbench and Cinebench scores for a laptop at this price point, and even laptops at a $2,000 plus dollar price point. And this laptop has a 99% sRGB and 72% Adobe RGB. If you want to know what one of the best bang for buck laptops is, it's the HP Omen. It's got aluminum top cover. Um, I'm pretty sure it has an aluminum keyboard deck, but don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've had it in the studio and reviewed it, but I spent some time, did a bunch of head-to-head -head reviews of this laptop, and it outshined almost everything in the competition. One of my favorite things about this laptop is the keyboard and trackpad. It's got the nicest soft touch keys. It's quiet. The trackpad is super smooth. It's kind of tacky, so when you're dragging and dropping elements and working in the timeline in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, it is a dream boat. Seriously, one of my favorite laptops, and especially at this price point. Like I said, I'm only recommending many laptops I've had experience with and really gave me uh, goosebumps or, uh, you know, bubblies inside, however you want to say it. It's bubbly or buble. You ever seen that commercial with Michael Buble? It's like, no, it's bubbly. It's buble. It's a good drinks. Anyway, moving on, we are looking at the Acer Predator Helios 300. This continues to be the best-selling laptop on my channel. This laptop sells like gangbusters. Last year, I think, uh, through my channel, over 130 uh, purchases were made of this laptop through my affiliate links. Um, and I've heard nothing but praises for the Acer Predator Helios 300. I have nothing but uh, but good things to say about it. Um, maybe outside of that, it's a little bit noisy. Um, it, you know, it's it's a gaming laptop. So it's made to run uh, at high performance, but it also gets kind of warm. So the fans have to kick on to cool it. But it's aluminum chassis. Uh, it's got solid color accuracy with 93% sRGB and 60% Adobe RGB. It's got six cores, 12 threads with the i7 10750H. It has the RTX 2060. It's got 16 gigs of RAM. And it's a 512 gig SSD. It is a laptop that really, really shines uh, for the price point once again. However, if you're not one for the gamer aesthetic, uh, if you don't like that really, you know, uh, ostentatious gamer aesthetic, then I would lean you towards the HP Omen because the HP Omen only has like a little iridescent uh, triangle on top of, not triangle, diamond on top of the uh, top cover. Um, so between these two, this is more of a professional look. This is more of that gamery look. You make your choice. And of course you have uh, Ryzen versus 
uh, Intel. All right, next up is the, let's see here, 300. Yep, next up is the MacBook Pro 13 M1. I have seen people uh, doing some 4K uh, video editing on this and enjoying it. I have ran this through multiple tests with 4K video editing. It performed well um, on single clip 4K video editing. So basically what I mean is if you have one like this, like we have a talking headshot or we have one shot that we're using, um, that would be a good use case for 4K footage. You're gonna have about 5,000 drop frames while editing in the timeline. You know, you click playback, do the playback test, about 5,000 drop frames out of 16,000 at full quality. At half quality, it's about 375 drop frames during the 4K playback. Uh, and then at fourth quality, zero drop frames. So can you do 4K video editing? Yes, but if you do uh, multi-cam video editing, uh, for instance, my uh, buddy uh, Tech Notice, Lori, he did multi-cam, or he does multi-cam shoots, and he said it just, it bogged down the computer a lot. Um, so I would recommend one cam 4K or multi-cam 1080p for the MacBook Pro M1. The big benefit is you have the new uh, Mac M1 chip, which is a fantastic chip, and it's gonna get even better when we have Apple Silicon native apps. Right now we're running on Rosetta 2, which is an emulation of current Intel apps. Um, so we have eight gigs of unified RAM, 256 gig SSD, 13.1 inch retina display with 100% sRGB and 78% Adobe RGB at around $1,300. Again, if you want to know the exact price, um, you can head down in the description below and click that link. And of course, that is an affiliate link um, if you do make a purchase. Next up is the Asus Zephyrus G14. This is this was and, and still continues to be one of my top recommended um, Ryzen laptops for 4K video editing. They have a Ryzen 7 4800HS and they have a Ryzen 9 4900HS. The Ryzen 9 is one of the best performing laptops in the Cinebench and Geekbench, um, one of the best performing laptops in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. But getting that Ryzen 9 is going to bump you up about two to $300 versus this Ryzen 7. Um, I love the color accuracy, a 91% sRGB and a 60% Adobe RGB. This laptop is an all aluminum chassis. It's got a great aesthetic. It's a really handsome laptop. Um, however, it does get pretty hot. So know that that's one of the warnings that I give of this laptop. It's one of the hot Hottest laptops I've reviewed on my channel. So it just, it's very hot. So it has about an 89 to 92 degrees Celsius during 4K export in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro um, versus having um, something like the, oh, what's one of my favorite laptops as far as cool is concerned? Ooh, the Gigabyte uh, Aero 17 is also a great laptop, but that runs pretty cool. It runs at like 78 degrees Celsius um, or lower when video editing. So just note that this laptop does get pretty hot, but it's a thin and light package, it's got great performance, and so you really can't go wrong with it. Um, just know that there is some heat issues. Next up is the Gigabyte Aero 15. This is one of my favorite all-time gaming laptops because it has amazing color accuracy with 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB. It's got six cores and 12 threads with the i7 10750H. It sits at around anywhere from $1,600 to $1,200. I know that's a big range, but they often have some sales on it on Amazon. Check the links below if it is on sale right now. Congratulations. Um, and then it also comes with the RTX 2060, which is a six gig G, uh, VRAM card um, and does fantastic for 4K playback in the timeline of Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Comes with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. D, great build quality. Like I said, one of my favorite uh, computers got my best of show award at CES 2020. Personally, I really dig it. Next up is the Asus Rogue Strix G15 with a 240 hertz screen. Um, this laptop is one of my favorites I've had in the studio because it just continues to outperform a lot of the laptops that come in there. It is definitely a gamer aesthetic with the you know super bright um, RGB lighting around the edge. Um, but if you get the 240 hertz version, you also have a 98% sRGB and 63% Adobe RGB, 32 gigs of RAM, RTX 2070, the i7 10750H, all for under $1,500. It, it just, it really is mind blowing at how good of a deal this laptop is. Next up is the MSI Prestige 15 4K. Now, what intrigues me about this laptop is how you have a i7 10710U uh, processor with a 1650 Max-Q GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, 512 SSD, uh, and 100% Adobe RGB and 100% sRGB, and you have awesome performance inside of DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. You get great playback, you get great export times, and it's even a mobile processor. So MSI has done a really good job fine-tuning this processor within uh, their system and my hat, if I was wearing one, would be off to them for this computer. I like it a lot because it's thin and light and packs a big punch. Um, all right, so next up, we have the MacBook Pro 16. This is definitely the um, epitome of Mac OS for the price. 
um, because if you get, you know, if you upgrade this computer to the i9 with the uh, 5600M, it's going to be like a three $3,500 computer. But at the base level, so for $2,200, this i7 9750H, 5300M, 16 gigs of RAM, this is the computer that I had in my studio and I tested for 4K video editing, and it really handled it well. It, it did not have, a, it had, uh, I think, maybe 20 drop frames at full quality um, in the timeline. 20 to 60, I can't remember, it was a while, it's been a while since I reviewed this computer. And then of course you have 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB for the color gamut range. So if you're a Mac OS user, you're not doing a ton of graphics processing, you're doing just mainly 4K video editing, you really can't beat this. And lastly, we're gonna take a look at the uh, Premiere Pro 4K to 4K exporting test. <clears throat> um, and if you can hear a piano in the background, I'm actually moving between houses. <laughs> and I'm recording at my parents' house right now as I am, we, and my wife and I sold our house and are moving to a new house. I'm gonna have a brand new studio. Um, and so, you know, my, wife, my uh, mom is a wonderful pianist. And so if you can hear that, enjoy. We're looking at the uh, Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export here. As you see down here, the Asus Rogue Strix G17, this has the same um, export times as the G15. So as you can see, that's one of the best 4K to 4K export times. Um, and then I'll just leave it here on the screen for a moment so you can kind of take a look at each of these. Around the middle of the range, you have the uh, 2020 HP Omen. Um, you have the, here you go, the MSI Prestige 15 that I was talking about with that mobile processor. And then um, you have the MacBook Pro M1, so on and so forth. Now moving over to the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K, um, we have um, a lot of the Ryzen processors sitting here at the top end of the fastest export times. And then as you see, we kind of move towards more of the mobile processors and some of the more Intel processors. But just showing you some of the 4K to 4K exports that I've run on my channel and the results that I have seen. Um, and if you don't know much about these, I take a nine minute 4K clip, put it into the timeline and then export it out at full quality 4K YouTube settings. All right, so make sure you keep an eye on the channel. Oh, no, let's go back here. All right, now, so as promised, what I wanted to mention is um, which specs to get. Now, like I mentioned earlier, some of the best things to do, and I'm gonna mention some of the processors that you should be considering um, as a really good, solid 1080p and 4K video editing machine. So on the Ryzen side of things, you wanna be looking for a Ryzen 5 4600H. You wanna be looking for a Ryzen 7 4800H, a Ryzen 7 4800HS, Ryzen 9 4900H or 4900HS. Those are some great Ryzen processors for 4K video editing. And you can find them at all different price points. Now on the Intel side, what you wanna look for is an i5 9300H or an i5 10300H. Then you wanna look for you know more 4K and up. You wanna look at the i7 10750H or the i7 10875H or the i9 90 10980H. Um, those are some great processors for Ryzen. Now, concerning GPU, what you can find is you can look and check out the um, GTX 1660 Ti. For me, that's where I feel really comfortable. Now, if you're going to do the uh, GTX 1650, those are great for some light 4K and uh, some heavy 1080p. But then once you get up to that 1660 Ti, from there and beyond, you're going to be a really safe zone for um, 4K and above. So the RTX 2060, the RTX 2070, 2080, those are rocket ships and you're not gonna have any problems with your video edits. Now, I'm sure you've heard a little bit about Quadro GPUs. Quadro GPUs are great. Um, I've recommended them in some of my other videos, like the best Windows laptops, so on and so forth. Um, and so, it just really wanna make sure that you are getting a GPU and a CPU combo that's well matched, so you're not bottlenecking either of them. Now, considering RAM, you wanna make sure that you're getting at least eight gigs of RAM, nothing less. And my recommended is 16 at the base, personally. 16 gigs of RAM will give you great multitasking. 32 will improve that even more. If you're getting into 4K, 16 to me is the base. 32 is like the sweet spot. If you're doing 1080p, totally good with eight. 16 will give you better multitasking. SSD versus HDD, as I've mentioned, SSD is gonna be the best, uh, it's gonna be most reliable, it's gonna be the fastest in performance because it just reads and writes straight onto the SSD. Whereas in a hard disk drive, really what that is is it's a moving uh, disk with an arm and an eye that reads the information. So it just takes a little bit longer to read and write. It's gonna possibly slow down your workflow and it could be a bottleneck to you. If you want more in-depth uh, explanations on what is a CPU, what is RAM, what is a GPU, what is a hard drive, I have full videos under my Don't Tech With Me playlist and I'd love for you to head on over to my channel and check those out. Again, if you're ready to make a purchase, you can head down into the description below, click one of those links. Um, and if you do make a purchase of that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. For more videos like this, click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating, 
keep enjoying the lovely piano music. And she just stopped. And I'll see you here in the next video.